Rescue is to free or deliver from any confinement, violence, danger, to liberate from actual restraint, to remove or withdraw from state of exposure to danger. Wildlife rescue refers to operations that usually involves saving life of the animal, a prevention of additional injury as a result of natural or human related accidents to the animals. Rescues can be opportunistic or it could be targeted when situation demands. However, if a wild animal is rescued, the operation is considered successful only if it is released in its natural habitat. Various rescue situations can be injuries from encounters with propellers of boats, burn injuries, entanglement in fishing nets that can sometimes lead to drowning, stranding in concrete canals, accidental straying out from its natural habitat to human landscape, animals encountered in illegal trade for consumption or trade in international markets. Eggs of Chelonians and crocodilians also need to be rescued if the nesting sites are prone for natural calamities like flood, prone to predation or destruction by other animals such as pigs and feral dogs and other possible problems like collection for consumption by humans. A rescue operation usually has several stakeholders and operates as a combined team effort. Occasionally, it can also be a single-handed effort. For success of a rescue operation, each stakeholder has a defined role and specific skills along with a specific task to accomplish. First responders are usually referred to the person who is the first one on the site and assists with a quick response based on a situation analysis by informing the concerned forest department personnel or rescue team. Enforcement agencies, other agencies like the forest department, local administration, railway authorities, airport customs officials, and police department officials, train veterinary health professionals to deal with emergencies in aquatic macrofauna and other agencies like human doctors based on needs. It is always suggested to go in for a situation analysis to assess whether the animal can be left as such or should an intervention be made for rescuing the animal. Can the animal be rescued with minimal intervention or does the condition of the animal require capture and management in captivity? Handling animals whenever not required is not suggested as it may cause unnecessary stress to the animal and can cause serious health issues. For example, in the first image, though the gharial is having a part of a fish net attached to its lower jaw, it has no problem for physiological parameters like respiration and circulation, and its feeding behavior is not affected as the upper jaw is free. In such cases, it is suggested not to intervene. The animal is fine as such and can probably remove the fish net part on its own. The second image is of entanglement of turtles in a fishing net. These animals can be freed from the entanglement if no or minimal injuries are observed and released at the site as it is the natural habitat for the species. The flowchart describes the protocol to be followed for a successful rescue operation. Once rescue call is received from field, permission from the forest department should be obtained. If no permission is granted, the operation should be aborted. If permission is granted, team formation, equipment gathering, and assigning tasks to each member, such as crowd control, handling of animals, vehicle or boat driving, fishing net, cage operating, transportation, health assessment, etc. should be done. Once tasks are assigned, Vehicle organization for transportation by boat or motor vehicle should be arranged, followed by animal capture by scientific methods. If the captured animal is healthy and fit for release, and if the origin is known, unlike confiscated animals in illegal trade, the same location or nearest suitable habitat should be selected for release as soon as possible. If the origin is not known, and the animals are severely injured, animals should be taken to a rescue center for first aid, health assessment, 
veterinary interventions, quarantine, and if required, rehabilitation. Triage and stabilization should be done after entry to the rescue and rehabilitation center. Rehabilitation should be done in terms of husbandry protocol, starting from adequate food cover and water requirement management until release. Once quarantine is over and animals have recovered, health assessment should be done again for fitness assessment before release. The animals, if found fit in the assessment, should be released back in the suitable natural habitat. The animals which are beyond recovery should be shifted to facilities that can provide lifetime care or euthanized to minimize suffering. Post-release monitoring should be done for successful rescue and release operations by competent people.